In this part, we're going to be discussing more about uh, content monetization and how much can publishers actually make from their communities. So over to you, Dan. Yeah, I think that certainly there's a, there's all the ways that, that marketers are used to buying, right? Which is contextual relevance. I want to be associated with the Oscars, and so I'm willing to sponsor a live chat yeah. around the Oscars because that's going to attract a certain demographic. Where I think we need to be going is putting a premium on the value of actually having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a, with, with a user, with a consumer, and, and really understanding how premium that, that value is. And, and so we talk about, I mentioned a little bit earlier, that a one-to-one -one conversation becomes a one-to-many conversation very quickly. We have threads, and, and one example I used recently was on mothering.com, women debating which breast pump to buy, right? There's yeah. 18 replies in that thread, but it has 19,000 views on it. And so the influence that that conversation yeah. has is enormous. And so when we allow brands to enter in, right, mm -hmm. and have a conversation in an authentic way, humanize their brand, uh, help a consumer, right, all of those kinds of things, we need to charge a real premium for that kind of thing. Uh, because it's a, it's a level of access that takes software, it takes moderation, it takes hand-holding of the brand, it takes all these things. And we need to make sure that we're realizing the value for that. And so we're certainly, there's folks like Federated Media beating the drum of conversational marketing. Mm -hmm. And we're certainly out having, having that conversation with more sophisticated, savvy marketers to say, don't put a full page ad in a magazine, right? Um, there are more efficient ways to spend mm -hmm. capital and get an enormous amount of value out of that in, in this sort of conversational uh, online media era. And so I think that it is under monetized at this point, and brands get a little bit scared when they're used to buying on a CPM basis, yeah. and suddenly you're asking them to pay a premium to talk to 10 people, right, that right, really right. matter. Right. Um, but uh, the way we talk about when we run focus groups, for example, is you come in and do a focus group with us, and our users don't leave the mirrored room and go home to their wife and kids. They leave the private conversation they're having with the brand on our site and are standing on a soapbox with a megaphone to a community of a million unique visitors a month that are yeah. reading that content. Well, if you think it's <clears throat> like if you go to any sort of brand summit, um, so leaving the, the online community space a little bit for a second, all of the conversation is about earned media. How do we, how do we get any little piece of value out of all of the content being created that's not even about our brand, but that's sort of related to our brand? Red Bull's a great example of a brand who you know, is, is looking to try to figure out how they become a content creator without having to create content. Right. Um, and, and, and so I think that the next wave of stuff we're gonna start to see has to do with sort of web-wide curation um, you know, and you know, probably fairly automated as well, where brands can start to actually be a little brave right. Right, to get extreme value out of content being produced that's related to them. And so that's, I think, going to be something we're going to start to see very soon. That's so like a Red Bull would pull from across the web content. What's well, relevant to Red Bull? The Red Bull you, know, you know, stuff that's happening around extreme sports is relevant to Red Bull. Got it. Stuff that's weird and quirky or, you know, inventive yeah. it has to do with Red Bull. And that's, right? that's like, that's what you start seeing um, Twitter and Facebook being successful with as far as, like, training brands to see things this way, um, being much more uh, efficient with their messaging. But on those social networks, you know, going back to that a little bit, um, it's very much on people who say, I love Red Bull, or I love energy drinks, something that's a little more hard connectivity rather than soft things that you were talking about. But those are extremely valuable where communities um, that publishers start to have, that's where you can reach that audience. Right? But again, it's less about it's less about me actually saying I love Red Bull exactly. or publishing some content about Red Bull. Right. It's more about Red Bull saying, hey, here's the kind of content that's interesting to us. Right. Um, and you know, how do we get access to that and sort so, of and use it? Right. So that the value of that earned media, I think, yeah. the brands have started to understand that. But but what is the value to the publisher? Like, do you actually charge brands for the right to participate in your forums? Absolutely. And if you don't, they can overrun a community very very quickly. If you let them know. abuse that privilege they will use the privilege, right? Um, and, and so there's commercial use policies with our site, and we allow the site owners uh, to work with us to, to delineate how strict they want that to be, or is brand participation ring fenced into a branded area, or are they, are they allowed to respectfully inject themselves into various conversations? So yeah, well we absolutely charge for it, and, and, and we are going to be charging more and more and more. And, and do you charge like by the comment or like or the right to have a guy like, on the president? The right or? to have a guy. So we do a flat fee monthly sponsorship in most cases. And, and again, that's a difficult thing. Is you've huh. got Google training everyone to pay per click and right. training everyone to do this kind of thing. And, and um, there is a branding effort 
that deserves a premium. And you have to def definitely be able to demonstrate an ROI as far as brand awareness and, and all those sorts of things, and we do that. But it's, it, it is teaching them um, kind of a new vernacular and, 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 a, and a new way to justify line items on their own. So on what, is, what is that value proposition? When you say Google's uh, um, justifying on a per click basis, what's the, how do you calculate the, the value to the brand of the engagement? Branding is still a real thing, right? Um, there is cost per click and cost per action marketing, and that's a real thing too, when you're just trying to, to close a sale. Um, but it, there's still, there is a real thing about saying how my brand is perceived in the marketplace. Um, and, and so we talk a lot about doing thought leadership um, or, or coming in and, and actually humanizing your brand. So on HeadFi, um, one of our group, we have a great headphone community. There's a brand that was really seen as a lifestyle brand, and the community is all hardcore audiophiles. Right. But it turned out the founder of the, of the company is a hardcore audiophile himself, takes an enormous amount of pride in the sound quality. So he came in, we did a focus group where he was allowed to talk to them, to members of the community, give them free product, and ask them questions, and completely change the perception of his brand inside of that community. You get a million and a half audiophiles a month. He immediately saw link, uh, clicks from our site to his site increasing, sales increasing. Um, and there was a hard ROI associated with that branding effort, and that content lives forever as earned media. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm a publisher watching this show, right, I think I, you know, maybe I've been convinced, okay, a great community can be, make people come more to my site for, for commodity media yeah. than to someone else's site. But what you're describing, I think, is probably out of the reach of, you know, like, I run a site that has, you know, 50, 100, maybe even half a million uniques. You know, calling up brands and being like, hey, do you want to pay to participate in my community? Right. That sounds hard. So what do I do as a publisher other than sell the huddler, which <laughs> may be an option in some cases, what, what do I do? Sure. I, I mean, I, I think that we ha you have to be effective at articulating that value proposition. And, and, you know, we have salespeople that sell this, right? And you have to be able to say why this brand is relevant to come in and, and take the time on this community, right? And so, no, not every community is going to be right for a Range Rover to come in. But if you're about fishing, then you should have pen reels come in and you should talk to them and invite them into your community and say, you're one of the most beloved brands in our community and we can really help you amplify that out. So even if you don't do it paid first, we're all familiar with sort of a, uh, you know, build a case study model, you give it away more cheaply early on and, and demonstrate that value proposition. You know, if, if it was easy, everyone would be rich and, and, and sure. well trafficked and, and everything. It takes work, right? And it takes iteration and, and discipline. Can we touch briefly, I think we're maybe running out of time, but can we touch briefly on how you guys, what, what is the business model yeah. of, of Discuss and Lifefire? Um, I can cut off. So when we started, uh, it's been a very straightforward business model around SaaS. So we have a free product that we've been growing and we charge certain publishers for a premium version. So very simple. Um, over the last couple of years, we've sort of amassed a incredible platform of publishers and really, really passionate users. So. Uh, right now, Discuss is doing around 700 plus 720 uh, million uniques every month. We have about 70 million commenters who are active across these sites. And what we've learned from publishers that we've worked with is that a lot of them are saying something very similar, like how do we reach this audience that is part of, you know, this is, this is not the 99% you know, of the web, this is not the people who are just passive, right? These are the people who are actually paying attention in the conversation, they're contributing content in right. a very frequent frequent basis, right. how can we use this monetizer size? And the difference with, you know, other and, and discussion with the black part is that these are not our communities, right? These are not our communities and these are not our users, but what we're able to do is connect these audiences that we're able to reach through um, how distributed we are and actually connect them with the publishers where they do have these interest graphs being built in these communities and they want to reach audiences that, that we value for rent. Yeah, I think you know our, our model is very similar. Um, we have a free product that anybody can come and install very quickly and easily. Um, and then we have a premium SaaS product. Um, so we work very closely with publishers. Um, so it's, a, it's an actual partnership relationship that we have, um, including assigning community strategists uh, to help implement the technology um, and help, under, help the publisher understand how they should be utilizing all of our APIs and all that stuff to create really productive experiences. Um, and so uh, that's our model now. Um, I think in, um, in the short term, you're going to start to see, uh, as Daniel already alluded to, um, that as our networks grow and become more powerful within the context of the internet as a whole, um, there's a ton of value there in earned media or creating content. Um, and you know, there's also a lot of connection between site A and site Z. 
we see uh, people who, you know, one day are participating in a conversation about PR. And literally five minutes later, they're off on some hockey blog, yelling and screaming at other people about yep. the goal that they scored. And that's a really, really interesting dissection. Right. And um, what we're finding is that there's a lot of value in that to people who, um, who want to understand, um, whether it's users or brands or publishers, who want to understand their communities better. Um, and, and so you're going to start to see um, some productization um, in terms of how I think these communities are monetized across across the web. From a basic metrics perspective, as a publisher, you want people, you want to go from a, a scenario where you're just getting search traffic to where you're getting more repeat visits, more direct traffic coming to your site, yeah. more page views, more engagement, and that's what these kinds of things can do, is right. people will come back if they are enjoying the back and forth they're getting in the comments and in the metrics productive are still looking at are, are it's evolving, it's changing, right? Yeah. And you've got to wrap it up. Yeah. I was just about to give you some awesome stats. <laughs> no? So, no. Uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this <laughs> episode of The Future of Publishing. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. You shouldn't have taken such a long thank break. We <laughs> <laughs>